Hey, so in this video I just want to talk about five cool math facts, uh, just some things that I think are interesting, and some of them are going to be maybe something practical, and some of them are, are just things that I think are kind of interesting in the history of mathematics. So, number one. Uh, so this is probably the one that's actually going to be maybe a little bit useful from time to time. Uh, so it turns out that if you want to find a percentage of a number, say x percent of the number y, you can instead turn that into finding y percent of x. It's the same thing. Uh, and I was showing this to somebody and telling somebody, and they thought this was really cool. And I thought, okay, well, let's include it. So, for example, suppose somebody wanted to know what is 32 percent of the number 25. You can turn that around and just say, okay, well, let's just calculate 25% of 32 instead. And 25% is nice because finding 25% of a number is the same as dividing it by 4. So therefore, 25% of 32 would be equal to 8. Likewise, 32% of 25 would be equal to 8. So again, you know, this is probably only going to come in handy in certain cases. You know, if somebody asks you to, to find something like 17% of 43, Okay, equivalently, you could find 43% of 17. Um, good luck with that one. So, number two. So, this is one that I've seen. Been, it's been making the rounds on social media for, for quite a while now. It turns out that there are 10 factorial seconds in six weeks. So, let's talk about how that is real quick. Let's talk about the mathematics. So, remember that, that if maybe you haven't seen factorials. 10 factorial is just a shorthand way of saying 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And it's kind of surprising because, well, you know, 10 is not a big number, right? We don't think about 10 as being this huge number. 10 factorial, well, how big is that? I think it's a good way to illustrate how big factorials are because there's, there's a lot of seconds in six weeks, right? There's, there's a good number of them. I wouldn't want to sit around and have to count them. So 10 factorial is actually a pretty big number. So let's see if we can justify it. So I claim that in uh, uh, six weeks, there's 60 times 60 times 24 times 7 times 6 seconds. And to get that, again, okay, there's 60 seconds in a minute. Multiply that by 60. That'll give us the number of seconds in an hour. Multiply that by 24 to get the number of seconds in a day. Times 7 will give you the number of seconds in a week. And then multiply by 6 to give you the number of seconds in six weeks. Okay, so let's start with those first three numbers, 60, 60, and 24, and let's factor those. So the first 60, I'm going to factor that as 2 times 3 times 10. The second one, I'm going to factor as 5 times 4 times 3. And the, the 24, I'm going to factor as 8 times 3. So I'm going to use those numbers. So I'm going to use the 7 times the 6 from the, the top row, and then I'm going to use all of those factors to come up with my 10 factorial. So let's see. There's a 10 uh, coming from the 60, so I'm going to use that one. So we've now used that 10. I'm going to skip 9 for a second. Our 8, we can pick that up from the 24. 7 times 6, that comes from the top row. 5 times 4 times 3, we can get that from the second 60. What are we missing? We're missing a 2. Well, there's a 2 in the, again, in that first uh, set of factors from the 60. We still need a 9, but notice there's two 3s left over, so we can multiply 3 times 3 to give us our 9. Hey, so now we've got all of those numbers. All we need to do is simply multiply those together. And then just tack on a multiple, you know, just times one because that's not going to change the value. And lo and behold, we do have 10 factorial seconds in six weeks. Kind of cool. Number three. So this is kind of a sad story. And you probably are not sitting there thinking this is going to be a sad story, but it's kind of a sad story. So I'm sure you've seen the quadratic formula in algebra. It's a way to find solutions to degree two polynomials. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared, B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Uh, it turns out, well, there's a, a formula for degree 3 polynomials as well. It's a little bit longer, so there's all three of the solutions in there. So, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you can memorize that one as well. I don't think anybody bothers to do that. And let's see, for polynomials of degree 4, there's also a formula. So maybe you're spotting a pattern here. So notice this is just one of the solutions. There would actually be three more of these that, to, to know the formula for all four solutions. So I was too lazy to show all four of them because I figured one of them would probably do it for you. So the question is, what about degree five? Are there these general solutions for degree five polynomials? And why stop at degree five? Let's just keep going forever and ever and ever. Well, it turns out that this was an open question for a long, long time. And some of the, 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 the top 
mathematicians in the world tried to tackle this problem, and they couldn't really gain any traction. I think about 350 years, at least, people were working on this problem. And eventually it was solved by a, a, a brilliant mathematician, but a teenage mathematician, which was, to me, you know, it's pretty amazing. Uh, one of the most brilliant minds in mathematics, Galois. And unfortunately, you can probably see, see there that he didn't live a, a long life. And so he, his story was kind of a sad one. You, I would definitely, if you're interested in the mathematics and the history, check out Galois. So unfortunately, he couldn't get into any of the top universities. He applied to a couple of different places. And one of the theories is that now was that the papers he wrote to get in, his entrance papers, were just so far advanced that the people actually, you know, reading them and, and, and checking things over thought that this person was just talking nonsense. It was too sophisticated. So he ended up becoming an outspoken political activist and, and was thrown in jail a couple times. He became a real firebrand, as they say. So at the age of 20, he got involved in a duel. And the true reason for the duel is not known, but it's suggested, the, the guess is it was because of a girl. So as good a reason as any, I guess, to get in, in a duel. So, you know, Galois knew that his dueling ability probably wasn't up to his mathematical ability. So the night before he got into this duel, he started uh, sort of summarizing a lot of his, his, his ideas and his notes and mailing them out and getting them to people. The stories, they kind of romanticize the story, like he just like wrote all night and poured out and made this great like uh, a work of mathematical uh, ability and that became like his... his his main thing, but it was, and his work was already out there, but he definitely summarized a lot of important ideas and got those into the hands of other people. So the next day the duel began and, oh, uh, Galois died. Number four. So this one's a little funny and also maybe could be maybe stretched a little bit. But the claim is the, the smarty pants, hippasis that proved that irrational numbers exist was put to death by drowning. And he was put to death by drowning because he discovered irrational numbers exist. So the Greeks at the time thought that all numbers were rational numbers. And again, a rational number is just a, a fraction, a ratio of two whole numbers. So 2 thirds, negative 4 over 11, 109 divided by 7. Those are all examples of rational numbers. We now know numbers, for example, like pi, are not rational. You can't, you, it's just impossible to write that as a ratio of two whole numbers. At the time, they thought that it was possible. They, they thought that they just hadn't discovered, you know, what two numbers make it work out. They knew numbers that would get them close, but not, you know, exact. So, and the Greeks were lovers of geometry. So what could be more simple than having a square with side lengths one? Well, it turns out that the length of that diagonal, which we say is square root of two, and you can compute that using the, the Pythagorean theorem, it turns out that square root of 2 is irrational, and that's what all Hippasus showed. And that would actually probably make a, 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 an interesting video at another time, but he showed that the square root of 2 was actually irrational. And for the Greeks, this was mind-blowing. Um, they kind of, so, so they, they thought that, you know, that, that, the, that all the numbers being rational were sort of an indication of how harmonious the universe was. And that really changed their, their way of thinking. So... On the other hand, they say he was killed for a different but equally terrible offense. So hopefully it wasn't for discovering, discovering irrational numbers. Some people say it was for something really bad, and it was he showed how to construct a dodecahedron inside a sphere. So number five. So in the monumental work by Russell and Whitehead, the Principia Mathematica, I've got a, a, a part of it right here. Hopefully you can see that. It's actually in three volumes now if you want to buy it. Um, I don't think anybody wants to read it. Seminal work. It was a big, big deal. And again, we can talk about the history of that another time. But these genius guys, these two guys, they spent hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages to prove the following result. So... I want you to, you know, to get your friends around and gather around and get ready. So they proved that 1 plus 1 equals 2. They spent hundreds and hundreds of pages showing that. After proving that result, they added the following remark. This theorem is occasionally useful. So... <laughs> British, British humor. So... Um, just to show you a random page from their book, here's one, uh, and I can uh, 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 say for sure, 
that's what they look like. So uh, it's pretty obscure stuff. So anyways, those are my five math facts. I hope you like it. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, comment on the video, like it, share it. That helps me. I'm on Twitter, not much of a tweeter, Patrick underscore JMT. I do sometimes give away free pizza, especially around important test times. So maybe it's worth your while to, to, to follow on the Twitter. Maybe you'll get some pizza. If you like these types of videos, uh, my donors at Patreon really help support me and help me do this. So it's just a, a, a hopefully cost-effective way for you all to, to be a supporter. I really appreciate it if you consider it. So uh, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, and I appreciate it.